Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. How I Paint Things never changes. And to demonstrate that today, I've got one of the NCR Rangers from Modifius for the Fallout Wasteland Warfare game. And I really had a lot of fun painting this dude. We're going to take a step back and go to very simple dry brushing and a minimum of highlights on this dude. Because I think it's time we concentrate a little more on just getting models on the table again. Despite that, I think this dude looks pretty cool. Now, Modifius did very kindly send this along for me to have a look at and paint up for the channel. So this one did come free, and it's worth pointing that out just on the off chance you think there might be anything untoward going on. But I think you'll come to the same conclusion as I do, that actually, the kit's really nice. So all of the paints for this will be listed in the description below. Let's get started. Now after a little bit of cleanup and assembly, this is what you'll have. If you've never assembled resin miniatures before, don't worry about these guys. I was actually really impressed with how little there was to do. You are going to have to do some cleanup, like little bits of flash and what have you, but much less than if it was a plastic kit, for example. You know, you're not scraping mold lines off of most of these guys. If I have one weird criticism, it is the fact that these are, these are really nice. Like... <laughs> These are so detailed and crisp, and the proportions on them extremely realistic. I I don't know. I, I would just want to paint them up and put them in a cupboard somewhere. I would struggle with putting them on a gaming table because I've got big, fat, chunky fingers, and these are very nice. I wouldn't want anything to happen to them. It's probably a really weird... It's, it's not even a criticism, but it is an observation on these kits. They really are quite nice. But with that out of the way, let's go ahead. I'm going to take them outside and prime them. And the color I've chosen to do that is with Citadel's Xandri Dust. Now you can, of course, use anything you like here. I would suggest a medium brown, so leather brown from the Army Painter, or Vallejo's leather brown, funnily enough. If you haven't got access to colored primers, then I would suggest at least try and find like a middling gray. Starting from black or white is going to take a little bit longer. But we're going to start now with his skin, because being quite close to most of the areas of detail, if we you know, mess up while we're painting this, we're likely to hit something that we will be painting later. And for this, I'm using Cadian Flesh Tone. Now, we're likely going to need to apply a couple of coats of this. But just take your time and all will be fine. Just let the first coat dry thoroughly before applying the second. Now, it wasn't until I'd put on the first layer of skin tone that I noticed he's actually got some detail on the back of his hands, which suggests he's wearing gloves. So, whoops, we'll just leave those as they are for now. Uh, but after a second coat on his face, his skin is done. I'm going to move on now to his shirt. And because I'm going to shade this, I want to start from a fairly light color to save me some trouble down the line. And for this, I'm using Carrick Stone. Now, I'm applying this. This is a, an Army Painter a small dry brush. And I'm going to use this to get down most of the color. You see, oop, the wedge tip is quite handy for being able to maneuver into some of these little spots. And when you come near any areas like his face or skin, you can slow down and not paint those with this big honking brush. Just let this coat dry and come on down to a smaller brush for that instead. Now, once I realized I didn't have to slow down and be careful around his hands, that was pretty easy. It didn't take very long at all. I've got now a little bit of Waz Decker Red, and I'm going to paint in the bandana around his neck. Now, honestly, there's not a correct red for this. Uh, you can either go a very dark red uh, or sort of a more faded color. It is up to you. Just... It's red, so that's what I'm going to go with. Now with that done, there is really only one final tiny, tiny detail to do. You'll see I've hit some of his hat there, but not to worry. I'm going to use a little bit of Gawthor Brown just to paint in his hair. Now I'm doing this now because I can paint up and hit his hair, sorry, his hat rather, quite happily. It doesn't matter. Now we're going to paint in some of the leather details, and I'm going to use three different colors for this. I'm going to start off first of all with Doom Bull Brown, which is a nice red leather kind of color. Uh, very similar to Vallejo's Cavalry Brown if you're looking for an alternative there. So I'm going to paint in this holster, and I'm going to paint in his hat with this as well. 
Now for the straps and bandolier across his chest, as well as his belt, I'm going to use Mornfang Brown. And as, as I was picking this out, I realized that on the cover of the box, he's actually got a fairly green tint to his shirt. Looks a little more like a faded khaki. If you wanted to go that route, then instead of using the Carrick Stone like I did earlier, you might instead choose something like Nurgling Green, uh, or even Necrotic Flesh from the Army Painter. That would be a very good match without having to worry about doing 12 cards. And when you're painting around his belt, don't worry too much if you do hit the belt loops, because we're going to do a little bit of tidy up with that Zandri Dust later, anyhow. Now the last leather color that we're going to use, this is Thondia Brown. This is a relatively recent release. Uh, you could use, what is it, Dryad Bark or Rhinox Hide if you preferred here. But this is just a little darker, I think, and sits quite comfortably between the two. So I'm going to paint in the straps on his legs, and remembering this time that he has gloves, I will paint his gloves in there too. Now, as well as that handful of details, no pun intended, I've also painted in his hat band. And this is kind of a good time to do that, because if you do make a mistake, you've still got your Doom Bull Brown right there. Now with boots, I'm going to turn to Steel Legion Drab, which is kind of a almost faded cloth color. Uh, it matches quite closely with the game files, I think. And it doesn't look too far off what I think a real pair of NCR Rangers... <laughs> real, goodness me, what am I saying here? Anyhow, this will cover beautifully, just one coat. Now once his boots are dry, but before we go ahead and start tidying up his trousers, I have some XV88, and we're going to paint in the wooden boards with this. Now, what color is wood is really up to you, but I actually quite like this slightly sandy... Uh, it, it looks like wood to me. And if it does look a little yellow right now, don't worry, because of course, we're not finished. Now once those wooden planks are dried, I've popped them on one of these little red grass games uh, holders. The swiveling top is going to come in handy in a little bit, but for now it's really just because I wanted something to hold them. I've got some Zandri dust, and at last we're going to tidy up, first of all, the sand out the front, and any little areas on his trousers where we need to tidy up. So belt loops and what have you. And I have got quite a big brush in my hand to be doing that, so I'm going to do the sand, and then swap to a little detail brush just to do his trousers. Now before we go on and paint his weapons and any metallic gear, we're actually going to dry brush the whole miniature. Now dry brushing is a technique which gets a bit of stick, because as much as I champion it, it is one which is easy to get wrong. And if you do, what's going to happen is you're going to smear paint all over that work you've just done. So it can be pretty disheartening. But there are some steps you can take beforehand, especially when you're just learning and you're practicing this for the first few times, to help mitigate that. So I've got here some cardboard that I have sprayed with a black primer, patent pending, this is extremely high tech. I have some Terminata stone, which is kind of similar to skeleton bone. It's off-white, very slightly peachy. It's a good color, this. And some kitchen towel. Now I'm going to use a makeup brush for my dry brush here. You could as well use a small dry brush. Citadel's ones are actually quite good, uh, but these are cheap, and I like cheap. So what we're going to do, crack open your Terminata stone, get some on the end of your brush. You don't need a huge amount. Just enough that there's some there and you can see it. Then we're going to sort of jab that and work it into the brush on the kitchen towel. And then you can take that and rub it across the slightly textured surface of that cardboard and get an idea of what you're going to leave behind before you apply this to the miniature. Now that's ideal bordering on maybe a little too much, but Let's just give that a few seconds more, and I start to see, you yeah, know, that's going to give me what I want. And so now that I'm prepared for that, I can start lightly dragging this against areas of detail. Uh, for fellas like this, he's got quite a lot of detail in his sleeves and what have you, which means you're going to need to approach this from multiple angles. But on his trousers here is probably going to be the best place to show you. Let's get that in shot. And just lightly flick along a few times and build up that color on those creases. And you'll see it doesn't take much, but you can very lightly, and I am barely touching the miniature as I do this. 
And as I start to run out of paint on the brush, I can apply a little more force and get some more color on there. So this is one which I thoroughly suggest. Have a practice. Um, grab yourself a few miniatures you don't really care too much about and seriously give dry brushing a go because you'll find there are a lot of things you can use it for. So I'm going to go around now and I am going to very carefully dry brush all of the areas of detail on my NCR Ranger here. Now, as with most things, I would suggest here that you're going to want to be a little braver with this than you might think. So you'll see, for example, in a few areas, our Ranger is a little bit chalky, but not to worry. Uh, particularly though on his hat, if I flip him around here, you'll see I've got a little bit more on there than I really would have liked. So at this stage, if you want to do some cleanup, just grab your original colors and block out some of the areas where you've gone a little overboard. Now, the only things I've gone back over are his hat, the straps on his leg, and his boots. The rest I'm quite happy to leave with that chalky finish. What I've got now is a little bit of dryad bark, and I'm going to paint in his cowboy repeater. I'm going to paint the whole thing in with this first, because uh, when we come back to it, we are going to paint the metallics of pretty much everything. Now, in some of the game files, that is a slightly lighter brown. Um, honestly, I'm just going with the darker because I think it looks better, and it's going to stand out against our other lighter leathers as a bit better for a, a wood color, I think. What I've got now is Iron Hand Steel, and it's really up to you if you want to use this or something like Lead Belcher. Um, I prefer a slightly shinier metal, something that we're not going to have to highlight later. So this is going to go over, funnily enough, all of the metal details. So take your time with this, his belt buckle, his revolver, uh, this little radio doohickey on his hip. I'm going to paint this in black later, uh, but let's just go ahead and paint in his gear. In some areas, you're going to find you do need to apply a second coat, particularly on his pistol, because it is such a prominent area. You want to get that right. I've got now a little Corvus Black, and I'm just going to paint in the walkie talkie. Uh, to be honest, I might come back once this is dry and put a little bit of silver stuff over the top. And with that last little dealy bopper applied, we're ready to go ahead and give the whole model the shade Agrax Earthshade, because of course, the myth, the legend, the absolute magic source. Now, you don't want to go crazy with this for a change. As we're applying this, we are going to jam it over the whole miniature. But don't, don't just bucket it on. You know, you want to have a bit of control over where it goes. Make sure you viciously thrash your camera while you're applying it. That'll help. <laughs> um, but yeah, make sure you are working it into the recesses, you know, up around his face and in his collar and what have you. Uh, once we've, oh my goodness, once we've got the whole miniature doused in this, we'll let him dry for about half an hour. Now, I will never be tired of seeing the difference between the pre and the post shade. Uh, looking at this one, you know, he's not perfect, but you can put him on the table really happily. And the way that that draws together all of that dry brushing, I think really helps sell the look. He looks a little bit dusty, a little careworn, like he's been out in the field for a while. And, well, he's an NCR Ranger, so that's how he ought to look. <laughs> what we're going to do, you'll see, though, that I haven't actually used any Earthshade on the, the sand. And for that, I'm actually going to turn to Sarah from Sepia just now. Quick coat of this, and that'll be the sand done too. Now while that's drying, I'm going to do just a little bit more to his face. I've got out some Kislev flesh, and what I'm going to do is just a little bit on his nose, his cheekbones, and his chin. You don't need to go crazy with this, just enough to add a little bit of definition. Now, to be quite honest, from this stage, I'm not going to do anything else. I'm going to paint in his base room with a bit of black, and then I'll take him outside and hit him with a matte varnish. Uh, I'm going to use the Vallejo spray. I really like that one. And let's get a look at what he looks like when he's all finished. And there at last, our NCR Ranger is complete. And as he goes around, you'll probably spot one or two mold lines that I thought I had taken care of, but clearly hadn't. So. Obviously, when you've got this in front of you for your own collection, you can be a little more careful than I have been. But this fella was a lot of fun to do, and from start to finish, he took me less than an hour. 
I didn't keep an exact track, but yeah, an hour, let's say, for a dude that looks like this, I'm pretty happy with that. There's a lot more that you could do with him, highlighting metal and what have you. And I'd suggest if you did want to do something similar to this, but to take it a little bit further, then check out the tutorial I did on Multicam, because the modern mercenary kind of look of that fella in that video will probably give you some really good ideas for how to take this guy a step beyond. But as far as dry brushing over flat colors and a shade, I'm pretty happy with that result. I think this looks cool. So thank you again very much to Modifius for sending these along to have a play around with. I am really surprised, and pleasantly surprised I should say, by the quality of the resin kits. I really enjoyed painting this dude. As well, thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment that I use, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my wonderful producers, Alan Nuttall, Kari Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Jimmy. Your support really makes a difference, folks. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time, and you all enjoy the rest of your day.